Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing a Play This, Not That with Blood Rage and Rising Sun. Now, now in Play This, Not That, a series that I compare two different games that I believe have enough similarities to compare, and then tell you which one I think is better, and then whether the loser is staying or leaving my collection. Sometimes it's two good games, other times it's a game that's leaving my collection. And in this case, I'm comparing Blood Rage and Rising Sun. And the first part of Play This, Not That is the similarities. Why are these games similar? What makes them something that I thought to compare to begin with? Now, to a certain degree, I assume you have some degree of passing familiarity with these games. But if not, the similarities will, will cover a degree of what these games are like. Now, now, on the surface level, nothing to do with gameplay, nothing to do with why I would actually choose to compare them. They are from the same series, these two games. Blood Rage and Rising Sun are both from the Eric Lang and Adrian Smith and Kaman trilogy of epic campaign games, epic area control games, that is going to be finalized with the upcoming Ankh, still waiting to be delivered, and I guess I'll compare that uh, at some point to the winner of these two. But the games are going to both focus very heavily on area control with, with again, the design of Eric Lang, the art of Adrian Smith, deluxified uh, miniatures by Studio McVeigh, deluxe amazing miniatures, presentation, tight, tense fighting, and area control over different aspects of the game. And that is, is the surface level similarities as to why I'm comparing them. The main mechanics, the main similarities of these games are going to be the giant miniatures, powers and abilities, different clans, and different, and then area control over, well, different ways of playing. Now, in Blood Rage, you're going to be playing over three ages. In Rising Sun, you'll be playing over three ages. Both of them share that. Both of them are more heavily about the glory, the, the points you'll be scoring throughout the game with a variety of cards. You'll be powers and abilities and benefits you'll be drafting to help your various civilizations or whatever you want to call it grow in the game. And both of them will seem very, very, very combat-focused while at the same time, it ultimately comes down to the points in both these games. Both games will give you the ability to effectively mitigate losses, to walk into a combat totally prepared to lose and to walk away the better for it. And so I think that's a general overview of how these games are similar. As far as the comparison, I like to start with price point. But I like to start with price first. Price is an easy one to compare because price ultimately is a factual discussion. And in that sense, these two games are very much going to be exactly ties. They both have the same MSRP. They're both available. The only real distinction would be if you're trying to hunt down a Kickstarter copy of Blood Rage versus a Kickstarter copy of Rising Sun. To that end, Blood Rage would have been more expensive at one point. But with the re-releasing of new content in the second Kickstarter, it has changed it to the basically be more similar again. If you want the retail versions, they are effectively the same price. If you want to pick them up with all their Kickstarter content, they're going to be somewhere in the same range, fairly expensive, giving you more stuff for the game. Uh, do you need the Kickstarter content for either of these? No. I'm a huge fan of going all in on many of these gigantic Kickstarter games, but Blood Rage I fell in love with with the core base game and the retail expansions will give you plenty of content to enjoy and appreciate your experience. And similarly with Rising Sun, Rising Sun will add more variability, but nothing you can't get from retail expansions as well. As far as ease of access, how is it to teach these games, to, to learn these games or whatnot, I think they're roughly similar. If anything, I do slightly lean towards Blood Rage being a slightly easier to teach and pick up game. I think there are less interplayed, uh, interplaying of elements in the game that make it slightly easier to teach, but slightly is going to be the key word in the game. Rising Sun has a few things that make it a little bit of a reminder in play. So for instance, the idea that when you harvest a province, you don't actually get the reward when you combat. There are a few things that are not as intuitive. Then again, Blood Rage has its own problem in the sense that when you move, you don't have to move adjacent. You can move anywhere on the board. So both of them have slight nitpicks that need to be taught to overcome what you would instinctively think. Both of them are fairly simple what they teach. Again, I, lift, I drift slightly towards Blood Rage being easier to learn and teach, but I don't have anything concrete to back that up. They are both too similar in that sense. Art and components is going to be up next. And in art and components, it is it is much harder in that one. So let's start with art first. In terms of art, I, I personally give the win to Blood Rage. While both these games are beautiful, they share the same artists, keep that in mind. They share the same artists, same studio, the same sculptors for the miniatures. Overall, I think I just drift more towards the theme of Blood Rage, and therefore the art speaks to me more as well. Measuring up the art versus the art on a more, if I try to remove that theme, they're very similar. They really have the same tones, the same the same stylings, almost as if the same person drew them, which the same person did. So, so the art wise, I, I I probably would give it a tie. Technically, Blood Rage wins, but I think that's more tied to the theme than the art itself. Component wise, it's going to be very similar. They both have amazing miniatures. It's going to come down to whether you prefer one miniature type over the other. That that's just more towards the theme category. 
components. Arguably, if anything, I might have to give Rising Sun the win if you're comparing the Kickstarter versions of this game. The Kickstarter version of the game, Rising Sun, gives you more deluxified components. Blood Rage, even with the second Kickstarter and the extra things they threw in, it doesn't feel as if they were as necessary, more so as they are shoehorned in. Rising Sun genuinely feels more like upgrades. Rising Sun would get a slight win on better components there, but again, just like the teach aspect and the accessibility aspect, we're talking very minor amounts. Overall, these games are coming from the same company, the same artist, same, same sculpts for the miniatures, same sculpting agency for the miniatures. Overall, so many similarities in what's being done here and their approach both to retail and to Kickstarter that we're talking very, very narrow dimensions. Which brings us to theme. Theme, which also drives my preference for the miniatures and the art of Blood Rage. The theme of Vikings, while arguably overdone, I still prefer to, to the theme of Rising Sun. Rising Sun is great. I have no problems or complaints with the theme. I was just having a conversation today on YouTube with somebody who was asking what the next Zombicide theme would be. And I said, Zombicide Pirates. And they said, what about Zombicide Ninjas and Samurai? And I was like, that. That actually sounds like an excellent theme. So it's not the theme in and of itself. I like the theme. I have no problems with it. But I still prefer the theme and the aesthetic of Vikings more so. I don't know what it is exactly about it, but the idea of, you know, demon dragons and Oni and whatnot are just not as appealing to me as Fenrir and some of these ridiculously over-the-top creatures that will drive your force home in Blood Rage. So overall, Blood Rage has a slight win in theme. Again, slight wins here. Both are themes are themes that are neither stand out as being particularly unique or amazing, while also both being themes that definitely do call to me, but, but Vikings just a tad more. Which brings us to the main crux of the conversation. Everything else is more the, the appetizer, so to speak, and the crux of the conversation, the crux of the preferences involved here, are going to come down to the mechanics of these games. And this is where it gets less structured and a little bit more all over the place. So, Blood Rage starts with the first point, with drafting. Blood Rage, in Blood Rage, you're going to be drafting your cards every single round. Every single age, you're going to draft your cards, pick a hand of cards, pick a card, pass to the player to your left, R rinse, repeat, do it again and again across three ages, and I love drafting. Drafting is one of, if not my favorite mechanic in board games in general. The tenseness that comes along with seeing a handful of cards, knowing you want them all, knowing that not only can you not take them all, but you have to hand the rest to your opponent who's going to use them against you two minutes from now. So many decisions, such a tense operating space that I absolutely adore. In Rising Sun, you're going to draft those powers and abilities, those cards, from a center of the table, you're going to use actions that drive every single round across Rising Sun. You're, you're going to choose an action. That action will choose what other people can do. And you'll have a special benefit along with that action. That's great. I like the sequencing there. But when it comes time to choose those powers, those abilities, those monsters, those things that make you feel so cool and powerful, it's, I mean, it's just taking a card from the table. It removes the tenseness of what drafting means to me. And so Blood Rage scores the first point there. Now Rising Sun comes back quickly with another point because Rising Sun does come with unique clan abilities. So every clan in Rising Sun is going to come with their own special ability to bring it to the table, and it's done well. What I mean by it when I say it's done well is that I often find that many times when you give asymmetric starting powers to characters, to tribes, whatever it is in games, sometimes it drives forward the way they are supposed to play the game. It removes the agency of how I want to explore the game, and rather forces you down a certain lane. Now, the way it works in Rising Sun, both because other players are always playing different things, so you're always taking different actions, as well as the fact that it's not so strongly done, the asymmetric powers in Rising Sun are well done. They still give you that agency to choose different things. Granted, in some small degrees, you will be pushed one way or the other because of the abilities you have, but overall, I don't feel it removes my choice. I feel it gives me something interesting as to why I will be the Bonsai Clan as opposed to the Fox Clan this game, and I appreciate the asymmetric abilities here and the way they are done, as opposed to Blood Rage does not have any asymmetric abilities. In terms of the, the turn structure, how you choose your actions, I like the choice in Rising Sun. I like the aspect that Rising Sun gives you this, this you play a card, you, you choose an action that's going to both give you a primary benefit as well as your ally a primary benefit. And those allies are going to be another point towards Rising Sun. I do like not just the way the allies are implemented in Rising Sun, the way you, you team up with another player and benefit from each other's actions, but also the way that the betray action does mean that you have a little bit more freedom, a little bit more agency to do things that will hurt each other, hurt your opponents as the game progresses and if you are not allied with somebody. And so both the turn structure of choosing ability as well as the ally are both elements that I find in Rising Sun that I don't see in Blood Rage that I do like about Rising Sun. In terms of Blood Rage, the combat in Blood Rage, this is going to be a big one. The combat in Blood Rage I vastly prefer over the combat in Rising Sun. You see, in Blood Rage, 
both games, to begin with, have, have elements of that losing player. The Locust strategy in Blood Rage, or in Rising Sun, the, the you know, Harakiri sacrificing your troops for honor and for to, to, to walk into battle walk, knowing full well you won't win. Both games have that element in their game. I think Blood Rage does it better, though. Blood Rage does it better, arguably too well. Arguably, the Locust strategy in Blood Rage is a little bit too strong, although if other players are aware of it and drafting accordingly, they will not only be able to deny you or Loki certain key cards, but the balance of going for some wins and some loss is an important way to play Blood Rage. So I think overall, while Blood Rage, I can make the argument that the Loki strategy is a little bit too powerful, I would make the argument that a Rising Sun is a little bit not powerful enough, and if I have to choose which one allows you to walk into a combat being prepared to lose and not worried about the consequences, I think Blood Rage does it slightly better. Additionally, in Blood Rage, when you commit a card to combat, Blood Rage's combat is going to be more card-driven. You're going to play a card to a combat that's going to augment the strength of the units in the place, and that's great, and that's fine. And then if you lose, you get your card back, which is excellent. You committed that six to combat, and then suddenly somebody wins because they outplayed you. You still have your six back. You can use it next turn. That's totally fine. It's excellent. You are not overly penalized for the loss. You, you lost the battle, and now you can use a six later. In Rising Sun, you're going to be bidding coins on different elements of how the battle plays out. Do you want to capture units? Do you want to kill people? Do you want to score points for who died in battle? And you're going to do that all behind your little player screen. You're going to put up your player screen, set it up, set your little uh, currencies accordingly of where they go and how they're going to play out. But then your currency is committed. Win or lose, you lose it all. You do not get anything. Now, there is a compensating factor that the winner of the battle does have to distribute what they committed to the wins to other players, but it doesn't feel as well done as the, the win-loss in Blood Rage. You could walk in, you have one player who commits a ton to the battle, another player doesn't commit anything, and they'll both walk away with coins from the winner. And so the battle in Blood Rising Sun, or more specifically the aspect of battle where you commit something to win, but then either lose it or don't, I prefer the way Blood Rage handles it. I prefer the way you can you can not feel as penalized. It's bad enough you lost. You don't need to get swiped on the way out as well. In terms of Rising Sun, another element it has is going to be the Honor Track. The Honor Track is going to be the tiebreaker for all things in this game, and there are a lot of ties in this game. As you raise or lower your honor through different mechanisms in the game, whether cards you gain, uh, combats you ensure, betraying others, whatever it is, the honor is going to be the tiebreaker for so many different things. As you move up one spot on the honor so that you can gain a Kami and then win that combat, those things are so important, and I love the honor system in Rising Sun. Another point in Rising Sun's favor is going to be the way the season cards come in or out of the game. You see, both these games rely on tons of powers and abilities that you're going to be trying to gain throughout the course of the game. Now, while I prefer the drafting in Blood Rage, I prefer the way you get those cards in Blood Rage. In Rising Sun, there's going to be a core set of cards you have every single game, and then different sets of season cards that are going to be mixed in that so every game will be slightly different. Sure, you have these seven that you always know are here, but these five are going to be different, and that's true for each of the three seasons. So you'll have 36 or 21 consistent cards and 15 variable cards that you can mix up these different sets, giving you different experiences, different things. If you got used to and bored of the different ways cards combine, well, then you have different options here. Now, in Blood Rage, you will not go through all the cards, especially as you get the expansions and as you bought more of the Kickstarter stuff and you have more monsters to add into your deck. You won't go through the cards every single time, so it's not like you're going to see them all. But there's a chance of you seeing them all. There's a chance of any different combination still being a little bit more static. You don't break up those patterns quite as much. And then finally, in terms of the mechanics, in terms of combat, or more specifically in terms of the way the monsters feel, Blood Rage gets a strong win in this one. You see, Rising Sun is this element of taking hostages, which effectively means that if you lose the, the bidding aspect of taking hostages in battle, that strength for a monster you have is meaningless. It doesn't really matter. The monsters effectively are relegated to being a single troop. You have to win the take hostages part of battle or your giant monsters that you spend so much time and energy to develop and you only get to use them a few times across a three-age game and then suddenly someone takes it a hostage. It feels so hurtful. It just feels like a complete waste. It doesn't feel like you invested in your monsters quite as much. I would argue in Blood Rage, when your monsters die and when you don't use them well, more often it comes down to that I feel I didn't use it well. I should have waited till I placed it there. It doesn't come to down some sort of cheap shot in battle where, you know, just the monsters get easily destroyed. If anything, the way most of the cards are structured in Blood Rage, it results in the monsters being the most protected from various abilities that will, you know, take other troops off the board. And so these core elements of the game, these monsters that are so much fun to get, you actually get to use them as much as possible in Blood Rage, as opposed to feeling a little cheapened by how the gameplay reduces the value of the monsters in Rising Sun. Lots of points back and forth. I didn't really keep track of who won in terms of sheer counting. 
But in terms of my own winner, my own preference, my own recommendation as to which game I recommend, it's going to be a strong, strong win for Blood Rage, which should not be a surprise to most of you, knowing that Blood Rage is my number one game of all time. But Rising Sun, I've managed to get to the table a bunch more recently. I played it when it first came out. I got a few games in. I ride my table. I was so excited. It was a spiritual successor to Blood Rage, introducing elements to, to a game system that I loved. I was so excited. I played it a few times, and it was good, but it wasn't great. And I waited, like, three years or four years, however long it's been. And then recently I had the opportunity to get it out again. We got in a few games in a row. I was like excited to jump back in. Now I know what to expect. I'm not walking with a different interpretation of what the game is. And so I walked in ready to play it. And we got a few games in. And I'm getting rid of Rising Sun. I think it's an excellent game. It's just, there's too many things that make it not a game for me. There's too many aspects of Rising Sun that make me not only prefer Blood Rage, but prefer Blood Rage to the point that I would never want to pull out Rising Sun. I would just rather pull out Blood Rage. These games are too comparable. When I compare Blood Rage to Inish to Cicladi, speaking of comparing Blood Rage to Inish, check out Quackle's channel, I'll throw a link down below if you want to see a Play This Not That with Blood Rage and Inish. But there are many other games where I compare two different systems and I walk away saying, I might prefer this one to that one, but I'd want to play both. I want the bidding of the gods in Cicladis. I want the host of power tiles in Kemet. I want the, the intrigue and the development of the, the rune and everything else in Chaos in the Old World. There are so many different systems at play and I like different aspects of them. But Blood Rage and Rising Sun, to me, share too many of the same high notes. They share too many of the things I like, that the things I don't like about Rising Sun just make it so that I'd rather play Blood Rage every single time. I cannot think of a reason to pull out Rising Sun when I have Blood Rage. There are differences. If you're someone who prefers alliances, that's great. If that honor track appealed to you, that's excellent. There are going to be different elements of play. It's not to say that they're similar. But the things I like best about both these games are similar. And I like Blood Rage more. And those key reasons, all those plus ones to each side, ultimately is going to come down to a few main variables as to why Blood Rage is the game that I'm keeping in my collection and why Rising Sun is leaving. And those are going to come down to a few things. The drafting in Blood Rage. The drafting versus the cards on the table, it is no contest to me. I love drafting. I will say it again, I love drafting. It is my favorite mechanic in board games. And to take it out from the system inherently says that this one, to me, is already fighting an uphill battle. That's true of Ankh, too, by the way. When Ankh shows up, I'm already worried that it will lose this battle back and forth for the same reason. It's already fighting an uphill battle because it has a similar system, but without card drafting. But additionally, the monsters, the way your monsters are minimized in that hostage battle, it just takes away from the experience. And the way you lose your coins when you bid, bid, bid in the battle, the combat mechanism of Rising Sun compared to the combat mechanism of Blood Rage, I vastly prefer the combat and the drafting in this game. Rising Sun has a lot of things I like. There's a lot of things that are different. The, the harvesting of regions for taxation, or however you want to interpret it, the movement around the board is more... It feels like more, more like it matters compared to Blood Rage. The honor track that I mentioned, I love the tiebreaker. The alliances, there are el elements of Rising Sun that I do enjoy, that I think it does well. And I completely understand why someone would prefer this game to this one, especially if they don't love drafting the way I do. But at the end of the day, the combat, these monsters that I want to enjoy, and I don't want them cheapened by falling victim to some sort of... These people don't fall over as easy as I'd like. By falling victim to some sort of hostage situation... I vastly prefer Blood Rage, and Rising Sun, unfortunately, is a game that I no longer feel the need to play, given the similarities they share and my preferences for one over the other. That's basically it. That's going to be this episode of Play This Not That. Play This Not That is a series that I'm trying to slowly bring back to the channel, doing more and more of these videos. It's something that I used to do a long time ago, and I'm enjoying them. I like, I like the, the concept of comparing different games and telling you why I prefer one over the other. Rising Sun has been in my collection for... Since, I, since the Kickstarter landed, for like three, four years, it's a game my children are going to miss. They don't play the game, but they, they love playing with the miniatures of the game. But they have the Great Wall coming from Awakened Realms, and that will give them their, their fix for the, the miniatures that they like. But ultimately, that's it. Which one do you prefer and why? Because I know, I know that Blood Rage is rated higher across the board. I do know that. And if you go on Board Game Geek, if you look at the Dice Tower Top 100, only five-way crossover was Blood Rage. So I believe Blood Rage in general shares the, the greater degree of love. But if you, specifically if you're someone who prefers Rising Sun and you have played both, let me know in the comments down below why. What is it about Rising Sun that is more preferable to you to Blood Rage? Why does this game speak to you more? Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I hope you have a good one.